Hey guys, welcome to my channel. My name is Heisy. I'm a working mom of a two-year-old toddler named Alina. It's been more than a year since we've implemented Montessori method. Now I look at our home, every space looks completely different from this time last year. We've worked on our spaces over time, gradually making things more accessible, more attractive and more engaging for Alina. So in today's video, I'm going to give you guys a tour of our home and show you our Montessori spaces. You'll notice each of the spaces in our home has been created with a purpose and offer opportunities for independence. I hope this peek into our home gives you guys some ideas and inspirations for your Montessori journey. So without further ado, let's jump right into it. So let's start off with Alina's bedroom. This is Alina's floor bed. We have an indoor tent over bed because it's winter here in Australia. It's great for keeping the air warm inside and blocking cold air from outside. She can open and close the zipper all by herself. Alina loves sleeping in here because it's cozy and warm inside. Ever since we made the transition from her cot to this floor bed, she falls asleep independently and wakes up and does her own things like playing and reading books until one of us comes in the morning. Unlike waking up in a cot where there's pretty much nothing else to do other than waiting for a parent to come, floor bed gives toddlers freedom of movement so Alina can decide when she gets out of the bed and what she wants to do when she wakes up which is exciting for her. So when she wakes up in the morning, which is usually around 6ish, she doesn't expect me to come and get her right away. She would rather play independently, keeping herself busy until I come in at 7 o'clock in the morning. And we have a mattress on the floor here because she used to fall out of the bed at the beginning of the transition. And sometimes I sleep on the floor because she would wake up in the middle of the night and cry and wants me to stay with her. Then this is where I'll be. And over here we have front facing wall bookshelves so Alina can see the cover of the books and find the books that she wants to read. It's low and right next to her bed so it's easily accessible so she can just grab a book and go back to her bed. I don't recommend this particular wall shelf though. It's not made for kids and the corner is not smooth enough but Alina learned to be careful around it over time. I'll link down below the IKEA ones which I found it safer and we have an IKEA floor book stand as well for more books because Alina really loves reading books. I've done a video about Montessori bookshelf ideas so be sure to check out if you want to know more about how to store books Montessori way. Now I'm going to show you guys Alina's wardrobe setup. This is a nursery rack from Kmart. We used to have hangers but it just never worked. She had a really hard time trying to put her clothes on the hanger and trying to hook it on the rack and it just completely put her off. So I got rid of the hangers and I've got S-shaped hooks on the rack instead and I also glued them on the rack so it's not fiddly and I've got ring binders on the back of her cardigans and jackets. All she has to do now is just to hook it on. I'll see how she goes with this idea. I might have to get bigger rings i'm not sure but we'll see i'll do another video about further updates and like what worked and what didn't work and down here we have a couple of baskets that have her socks and singlets so she can just pick out and put it on all by herself and this powerpoint is all covered and childproofed so she can't play with it and we have more storage containers for more socks and her hats and other bits and bobs we have nappies and wipes in here. We still use nappies for naps and nighttime sleeps. And this is Alina's dresser here. Now Alina's tall enough to reach all the way to the top of the dresser. So I had to remove everything off this dresser top because we've come across a few pseudocream disasters recently. So I just hang the basket on the wall and put all the lotions and creams up here so she can reach at all. And I've made some changes in the dresser recently, so it's easier for Alina to find what she needs. So in the top drawer here, we have her pajamas. And in the middle drawers, we have her indoor outfits. So tops on the left side and bottoms on the right side. And we have her outdoor outfit in the bottom drawers. Tops on the left and the bottoms on the right. I fold our clothes with the KonMari method, so it saves space and Alina can see everything at a glance, so it makes it easier for her to find what she wants to wear. And 
and we've installed a baby gate on the outside the door because she learned how to open the door recently and she did walk out of the room at night a couple of times so this gate is just to make sure that she stays in the room and she's not walking around the house unsupervised and we have Alina's little toilet station in front of her bedroom I've done a full video about potty learning Montessori way recently I'll link it down in the description box so check it out if you want to know more about Montessori potty learning and how to set up toilet environment so we have a realistic looking white potty and we have everything at the ready so we have toilet paper clean underwear and some cream in the basket so Alina can use the potty without my help and we also have a small rubbish bin for used to tissue and a laundry hamper for soiled clothes and we have some child size cleaning tools on the ball down at a level that Alina can easily get to and we have a step stool in the sink so that Alina is able to access the sink by herself. I still need to be with her and help her washing hands here because she's currently working on how to open the tap by herself. I'm going to get an automatic soap dispenser in the sink for Alina once she's able to open the tap independently. And down here we have hand towels and I've added a hook for her so that she's able to have a towel at her level. The next space I want to show you is our living room area. We have a fully functional kitchen where there is a working sink with a water pump. This is her kitchen but it also works as a self care station. So she would wash her hands, wash her dishes and veggies and also brushes her teeth and wash her face here. We have her toothbrush and paste here and I've added small containers where she can store floss and cotton pads. I've noticed when she washes her face here or any sink in the house, water goes everywhere. So I got her to use cotton pads for washing her face and it works really well. And I put her lotion in this small travel container so she can just grab it, open the lid and apply lotion all by herself. And this cabinet is her little snack station and we have a breakfast cereal here. And her child-sized kitchenware, calories and baking utensils are kept in this kitchen. We also have a mini fridge for her cold drinks and yogurt pouch and milk and whatnot. So she could have her breakfast and her snack independently. I'm probably not going to go through all of the details because I've done a several videos about this Montessori kitchen. But I'll briefly show you what this water pump looks like. So this is the water pump and we have 3 liter water jug at the back for clean water and this is for dirty water. So when she presses this button, clean water comes out and she washes her hands, veggies and whatever. And I drill some holes on the bottom of the sink so water can drain into this container. So I actually got a ton of questions about this setup, asking if kids play with the water pump and if they would constantly make water mess. My answer is yes they do at first, but Alina got bored of it after a while. Its novelty soon wears off and they leave it alone. Alina is now done and dusted with playing with the water pump and she's actually using the kitchen for real practical life activities. So if there's anyone out there who's hesitant about making a functional kitchen for your child, I'm telling you they soon get bored of it and they learn to be mindful when using water and they love it so much. So trust your child because they will learn. And over here we have a water station where Alina can drink water by herself when she's thirsty. We switched from a water dispenser to this small water jug as cleaning a large water dispenser every day was a pain in the bum. This jug is small enough for her hands and lightweight so it works really well. We've taught Alina to drink from these IKEA glass cups since she was 6 months old when we were weaning her. They are perfect size for toddler's hands and now her hands are bigger and she drinks more at a time so I switched it to these bigger ceramic glasses. She broke a few glasses in the past and that's actually how she learned that things can break and this helps to create good habits of handling fragile objects properly and carefully. And we are teaching her that her actions have consequences as well. And we have a spray bottle and wash clothes down here so she can wipe down her table after meals or any water spill. Next to our water station, we have our front-facing bookshelf. Again, children love to be able to look at the covers of the books and it's hard for them to look at the spine of the book. So this types of front-facing bookshelf where you can arrange books like this, toddlers can easily grab the books that interest them and easily put them back to where it was. 
And you'll notice most of the books we have for Alina have real images of animals, items and vegetables and real images of children, which is Montessori aligned. I found that Alina's more engaged with the books that are based in reality and have real images because it makes more sense to her. This is Alina's winning table and this is a reading nook slash bench set that I DIY'd out of an IKEA bookshelf. I have a video how to make this set so find the link down below in the description box if you want to check out. So Alina has breakfast here on this table and this table is great for sensory activities as well. We do messy play here and small world play here as well and it can turn into a light table. It's so versatile. I have multiple videos for play ideas on this IKEA table. I'll link them down below as well. And we have lunch and dinner on the dining table together. We have the stocket trip trap high chair and Alina can get in and out of the high chair independently. Although Alina fell off this high chair and hit her head on the floor so it does require direct supervision. And the next space I'm going to show you is our kitchen. I made lots and lots of changes in the kitchen slowly over time as Alina grows so that she can participate in activities that's happening in the kitchen. So the first thing I'm going to show you guys is her learning tower. This learning tower is literally the most used item that we have in the house. It allows her to easily access to the countertop to help me cook or help me cut things or make snack. She does a lot of sensory activities here as well so it just makes my life easier especially when I'm cooking. I do have a bunch of activity ideas you can set up on a countertop while you cook so again I'll link it down below as well. Now I'm going to show you guys our kitchen drawers. We are using the same plates and bowls most of the time so I got rid of her plastic items and I shifted all of our bowls and plates that we use every day in here. Luckily we have this large pull out drawer that is low so Alina can access easily. One of the best things with this setup is that Alina is now able to take things out of the dishwasher and deliver it to the correct place. And under the sink we have our Bokashi compost bin. I have Alina help me adding kitchen scraps in here and spray Bokashi liquid to break it down faster. She also helps me tap out Bokashi juice which can be diluted with water and be used as organic fertilizer. Once this bin is full, we're going to bury in our garden. It'll break down into compost that'll help our vegetable grow. Composting is a great way to teach children about the natural cycles of life and care for our environment. Now let's move on to our playroom and I'll show you how I set up our entrance after that. I'm going to give you an overview of how I set up our shelves and how we rotate her toys. So not all of her toys are in here. Currently we have 10 activities available for her and the rest of her toys are stored away in our guest room for later rotation. So we have a shelf that are low so Alina is able to access her toys easily and we have one activity per cubby so Alina can see all of her activities at a glance and choose what she wants to play with. In our playroom I made sure that everything has its own place which makes cleanup a lot easier. Another thing you might have noticed is that we have trays for each toys. This helps to contain all the pieces of activities and it makes it easier for Alina to bring the tray on the floor and work on the activity and once she's done with it then she can just carry the tray back to its place on the shelf and return it. And over here we have an accessible art and craft space in the playroom. I don't leave out all of her art supplies at once. I would rotate it just like how we rotate her toys and books. So we currently have IKEA soluble pencils. So it's just like regular pencils but when you blend it with water it turns into watercolor and Alina loves it. And the last area we have is our entrance. I've created a space here that's just for Alina. Not all of our shoes are right here. We only keep our four shoes at a time that are weather appropriate. We have a small basket down below for more socks if she needs it. I have a small stool here where she can sit to put her shoes and take them off. This is actually a basket from Ikea. And I've added an IKEA wall shelf where we can keep her sunscreen, sunnies and wipes and whatnot. And I added hooks onto the shelf for her mask, hat and her shoehorn. I found that having this kid side shoehorn is a game changer. Some of her shoes are really tricky to put on especially with her winter socks. Now Alina can manage it perfectly all by herself. So this is it. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. And if you want to watch more videos just like this, you might want to consider subscribing to my channel. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye!